Nights was started about a year ago, a year and a half ago, by myself and Jeff Blake. We had a business idea before of what's good, and that was a loyalty stamp card app. So we realized that a lot of people walk into a store with their phone in their hand and they usually forget their stamp cards and you know they normally have 8 out of 10 filled out at home, 5 out of 10 in their pocket. So we digitized that platform, ran it at Boosted Juice and Bears for a while. We kind of abandoned it and a company with the same sort of technology got bought out by Google for a lot of cash and we're like, okay, we're kind of on something here. Yeah. So that summer we go back, just working at a technology company and I'm just working at Cafe Crepe. And just like, okay, I still think we got something, let's start a company. And I'm like, well, I was working as a promoter downtown a few years ago and I saw how messy it was. You know, you're using paper tickets, you're yeah. basically a ticket slave, you're busting your ass around just trying to get people this piece of paper when they get to the door. At the end of the night, you're counting ticket stubs at three o'clock in the morning just so you get paid. I said, this needs a little technology. And then Jeff, you know, did a lot of research and he's great at researching. He said, wait a minute, this is, is a huge opportunity in ticketing as well. We validated that this idea is something that, you know, is, is needed. And so in September, Jeff drops out of school and commits full-time, September 2011, and he just goes balls to the wall and he learns a bunch of programming. And by November, we have the first iPhone app. Summer came around and we, we, were, we were approached by an investor to get some funding, we got a great office space downtown in Yale Town. We were learned a lot, we did tons of events, we did boat cruises, we did yeah. club nights, and we refined the product, brought on a designer to help us take the design to the next level, so now you know, everything started looking really, really great. We just now program mobile tickets for any phone, so not just iPhones, but any phone that has like an internet browser connection. Oh, okay. Can now buy tickets That's very through the convenient. browser. It's very convenient. We realize mobile is, is happening now, but it's mobile's not iPhone. You have a new feature where you can check into guest lists on the iPad. Can you show me how to do that? Yeah, I can definitely show you that. Okay. So come up to the nightclub, and I'm, this nightclub's called Club Fiction. Right. And so this Club is the Fiction. List. Yeah, Club Fiction. This is the list. It's all digital. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just look through it anytime. And so I say, okay. So what's your name? Sasha Honey. Okay. So we'll just search that. Boom. Yeah. There you are. It's like Sasha Honey plus one. Right. And added by default and VIP, no line, no cover. So I'll put two of you in there. So I'll say, okay, two have entered. Can I add you two more? And then yeah. I just close you. Okay. You checked in. Yeah. Easy as that. Easy as So if I had a note, I could say, okay, maybe you actually want bottle service. Right. Or something that I could put that in and right. say, she needs bottle service. Or you already had bottle service and so you're saying, oh, um, she wants Grey Goose, so I'll put it in there, Grey Goose, so then now the host of the door is like, oh, Sasha, here, your bottle's waiting, and then I can tell the other host that it's Grey Goose, and it's all, yeah. it's all sort of integrated. What was the process like creating the app? We get it to Jeff Blake, because I mean, he was, the process was, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. Wow, um, okay. Um, you know, putting it all together, Jeff's pretty smart on his own, like being able to go in there, create the app, you know, fix the bugs, like update it and constantly, you know, as, as we're moving, we're always changing a bunch of stuff. It's a pretty, I'd say, I would say it's a difficult process. It's long hours for sure. I mean, you know, just putting in 14 hour days. That's a long, it's a, it's that's a, a long day. It's a long day, exactly. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, 14 hour days, you know, six days a week. You know, that's crazy. But that's what it takes when you have one developer. Right. How did you contact other companies to use your platform? Well, I mean, a lot of a lot of it comes with cold calling or cold emailing, but that's not the best technique. You kind of just want to get in there, listen to them, build a little bit of rapport, and then try to get them to do one thing, like go to a website or watch the video you sent them, right. and then hopefully meet them afterwards. Um, we did have assistance. I mean, sometimes you know, if you have an industry insider or someone who knows people, you get introduced. That's another way. We've also hit people up on Facebook. We hit people up on on Twitter. Um, or just going to the venue and being like, hey, uh, you know, let's let's talk to the manager or talk to the owner. A lot of the times, like showing up at the venue is a big impact. Like you call an email, but when you go there and you sit with them, you know, on their busy night and you just talk to them and they're like, okay, come back next week or let's do a trial next week. That's kind of the, the yeah. I would say it's called direct selling. Yeah. What would you recommend people interested in starting a business? The most thing I'd recommend is to, to build a team of people who are competent I and mean, that's, that's simple with skills. The second thing is just just do it. Not like, you know, jacking off Nike or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nike, have, yeah. just do it. <laughs> so you have an idea, just go out there and 
and figure it out. Don't just sit and dream. Yeah, you know, don't be scared just, of rejection. Exactly. With our first business, we got like 90% rejection. Oh. And then we got Ferris Burger and Boosted Juice. We're like, okay, we'll, we'll work with you. So don't be scared of, of, of rejection and then really just enjoy it. Enjoy, if you really can enjoy it and really ready to like put in like all those hours and like kill it and whatever then, and sacrifice for it, then you're going to be a little bit ahead, but just be ready for dips. It's not always just going to be straight up. Right, it's yeah. It's like it goes up and you get a couple bumps. Some bumps are bigger than others. The yeah. biggest bump may not have hit you yet. You just want to be strong in that. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll make it. But really, don't ever think that you can completely wipe out all the risk. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, it's a risk game. And if you don't like risk at all, then maybe it's not for you at that point. Exactly. Just like get to a point where you're comfortable taking risk and then it'll be easier. How do you keep yourself organized? I think writing stuff down right. is the first the first thing. Like making lists. There are a lot of cool tools online now, like stuff like Trello. Trello. Trello, Trello is like a task manager. Okay. So it's stuff like that. There's a lot of cool things like startups use to do that, like keep yourself on track, keep your team accountable. Right. So we use we use a couple of those. What's your favorite club in Vancouver? I think I would say Fortune. Fortune. Fortune, Fortune Sound Club. Why is I, Fortune? I, I like the sound system. The crowd is cool and just the the look, the feel of it is just a little bit different from everything else. It's off Granville. I mean not that anything wrong with Granville, I was like a very high frequency visitor <laughs> to, to Granville Street like a couple years ago, but yeah. the Fortune is cool. I, I like and the staff, the staff also. Yeah. I love my club here. What is your favorite brunch place after a night out? In uh, Vancouver. In Vancouver. Uh, well, I guess the thing is, I'm, I, it's more like my favorite brunch meal. So, Where, so yeah. Like, I, I mean, like Sophie's is great, and like my girlfriend likes Sophie's a lot. Yeah. But um, I like Milestones Prime Rib Hash. What is that? It's like, it's amazing. So it's, like, <laughs> uh, it's weird. You've got shredded potatoes, I guess, or hash browns. Right. And then you've got shredded meat as well. And then there's hollandaise sauce. Oh, that's it's just, so good. It's, it's just magical. It's, yeah. it's kind of like a, a, an eggs benny without the bread. Right. Two bread pieces. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what's I it like, called again? It's called the Prime Rib Hash. Yeah. Prime Rib? Yeah, Prime Rib. Oh, I thought you were saying primary. <laughs> prime. <laughs> it's Prime for the moment. Prime, I guess, yeah, you pronounce it. Yeah. Prime Rib Hash. Yeah, okay, Milestones. Milestones, yeah. What's your favorite shopping location in Vancouver? I don't really do any shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I'm not really into buying anything. Right. Um, I like shopping at Whole Foods. Shopping at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's the extent of my shop. I, I only right. shop when I need something, and then it's like a military operation. I get in there, I buy what I need. I'm you out. know what you want. What I want, like yeah, I don't really, I don't really frequent malls, yeah. even though that's like my last name. But that's. It. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a personal motto or quote that you go by in life? In life. Something that motivates your phrase. Investing in people right. would be my most important thing. If you're rich and have a lot of resources and have a lot of stuff, you don't really know the value of people. But when you are a student or you don't have as many resources, it's like the number one resource is human resource. And if you invest in human capital and you invest in people, you give them you know room, mental space, like creative space to do things, then you have an army of people who can achieve anything you want. You know, so I'd say yeah, that's that's kind of what I live by. Is like be good to people. Invest, invest in them, and you know, reap the rewards of that. If you could be invisible, invisible, or read people's minds, and you can turn the superpower off, which would you choose? Yeah, I think I'd want to read people's minds. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why over invisible? Uh, because half the thing is like when you're trying to sell, when you're trying to sell something to somebody, you're trying to get something out of someone. Yeah. It's not as much of, about you being persuasive to them, but it's more about you knowing where they're at and what they need, and then just hitting that, mm -hmm. and then you just get whatever you want. You can do that with body language, you can do that with keywords, cues, things like that. But if you could read what exactly what's on their mind, you're like, oh, I'm like talking to this guy, and his mind is like, I'm never gonna do this for less than. Five <laughs> And you're like, okay, 450, and it's like, it's yeah. like boom, it's like boom, you're done. And he's like, okay, the deal shake. So that yeah. would be a very cool power to have. Oh, interesting. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much.
Good night. <laughs>